right, so I want to go ahead and make this disclaimer. If you don't want to see the results, you don't want to know what happened on SmackDown because here in the United States, SmackDown was actually, well, because SmackDown's in the UK, SmackDown is on right now, and it's like 3 or 4 o'clock over here in the United States, even though SmackDown's going to be airing on a tape delay early later on tonight at 8 o'clock here in the United States. So, again, if you don't want to know what happened, if you don't want to know what what's happening like right now on SmackDown, don't watch this video, save it till later on. But nonetheless, if you are watching this video, this is SmackDown. This was the go-home show SmackDown before tomorrow's Money in the Bank pay-per-view. And I thought this was a good show. I thought this was a really good go-home show. You could tell WWE was doing a lot to try to get the fans hyped up, which automatically the fans were hyped up for this show. They're going to be even more hyped up for tomorrow. We kicked the show off with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn successfully defending and retaining their undisputed tag team titles against Pretty Deadly. And I want to say something here, right here, right now. Despite the fact Pretty Deadly didn't get the win, I thought that Pretty Deadly, I thought they put up a really good show, man. And they're going to they're gonna do good on SmackDown. They're going to do really good on the main roster. But uh, everybody knew they weren't going to beat Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn tonight, um, or at least this afternoon, like I said, here in the United States. Um, Kevin Owens was limping, though. I saw him, well, everybody was seeing him limping towards the end of the match. Hopefully, you know, he was just selling like he always does, and it wasn't nothing serious. So we'll get back to that later. But uh, overall, I thought this was a really good opener, really good tag team match. Okay, so um, obviously the entire Brawling Brutes have just been pissed off, cause it, uh, especially Sheamus and them after what Solo did to him last week. And obviously um, freaking Rich Holland wanted to get his shot at Austin Theory. He was going to Adam Pearce saying, like, let me, let me get my hands on uh, Austin Theory. Let me get a shot at the United States Championship. So this was a, I believe this wasn't a number one contendership, but a championship contenders match. You already know how I feel about those. I am not a big fan of championship contender matches. I just think those are a waste of time. Like you have to, you got to beat the champion in a non-title match, and then you got to beat the champion again this time for an actual championship to win the championship. I just think those are just stupid, like in my opinion. But nonetheless, Austin Theory took on Ridge. This match didn't really last that long, if I'm being honest with you. Austin Theory won. Sheamus did confront him afterwards, so they could be setting up Sheamus and Austin Theory down the line for the United States Championship. Obviously, um, I know those guys at a live event here in my hometown a couple of weeks ago actually had a match. So looks like they're still planning that match potentially for SummerSlam. For SummerSlam, we'll see. But um, yeah, they, from an in-ring standpoint, this match was just kind of mid, if I'm being honest with you. A lot of these matches actually outside of the uh, tag team match we saw earlier in the show was just mid for me. But Bailey took on Shotzi, and this was Bailey's number one um, base of her money in the bank shot on the line. Like if Bailey was to lose here, which as you see in the picture, she didn't um, because EO helped her. But if Bailey was to lose here, then Shotzi would have been in it. But this crowd was all for Bailey. They were they were doing that chant. I don't I don't know what the significance behind that chant is for Bailey, but they every time she comes to the UK, every time she comes over there, they always chant it. They did it when um, WWE went to Cardiff Wells at Clash at the Castle, and they did it again this afternoon. And I was just like, wow, like, man, this crowd loves Bailey. But hey, who doesn't love Bailey? Come on, like who doesn't love Bailey? But all jokes aside, her and Shotzi, man, I just thought this match was sucked. It was, it felt pointless too. I was like, dang, well, why are they doing this match? Like Shotzi, you know, I just poor thing, man, and she can't catch a break. She confronted Bailey and Eo after the match, and um, they literally cut her hair off. So Shotzi must be getting a new do or transformation um in the next couple of weeks. So we'll have to see about that. But um, like I said, as far as I felt like about this one, Bailey. And Shotzi, I was just like, yeah, I'm just not really feeling this one. So this segment I thought was pretty good. Um, the Grayson Waller effect uh, it was with Logan Paul, but we all knew with Money in the Bank tomorrow, we all knew how this was going to happen. Everybody came out there. L.A. Knight got a huge reaction. That dude was, oh my. That, like, I've seen people go L.A. Knight, yeah, but this afternoon I thought that was probably the loudest L.A. Knight, yeah, chant that I've seen. 
and L.A. Nightman being so over. I won't be surprised if they end up turning him babyface just because he's getting just amazing crowd reactions. But And Logan Paul, I thought he did his part well as um, as a heel, too. He was getting himself over, getting some booze. Um, he even told off L.A. Knight, like, w weren't you supposed to be a manager, Max Dupree? So I thought that was a little funny. But everybody else came out said, you know, they're going to win money in the bank. Y'all know how they do this. Butch came out. He wanted to fight. And that led to the triple threat match between Butch, Santos Escobar, and uh, L.A. Knight. And, you know, like I said, man, you know, uh, from an in-ring standpoint, most of these matches are kind of meh. Uh, and I thought this matchup was just meh. But Butch did win here. They did get their shots in after the match. And Butch was the one who climbed the ladder and uh, retrieved the briefcase. So that should tell you right away Butch is not winning tomorrow. But I thought overall from the segment standpoint, I thought the segment was good. You know, the match, meh. But from a, you know, from a segment standpoint, they got themselves over. And same thing with this one too, man. Charlotte versus Asuka. The moment I saw Bianca Belair out there, she had the ticket. She was a fan watching the match. She wanted to observe who, well, she was going to go after next. But I, I already knew where this was heading. Charlotte and Asuka barely got any shots in. Um, as soon as they went to the outside, I knew where this was heading. Um, Charlotte big booted Bianca. This led to Bianca getting pissed. She went after Asuka. She went after Charlotte. Um, Charlotte got pissed. Charlotte was putting a hand in her face. Bianca kept telling her to get the hand out of her face. So she went after Charlotte. Then she went after Asuka. She Kato would her on the table. Then she Kato would Charlotte on the table. And as you see in the picture, Bianca just stood tall. And this was good. So I mentioned earlier in the review that they could be planting the seeds for uh, Austin Theory and Sheamus for SummerSlam. Don't be surprised if SummerSlam we get Bianca versus Charlotte versus Asuka for the Women's Championship. Now that will be a SummerSlam triple threat match I would kill to see. And uh, speaking of killing the sea, man, this was the main segment of the night. The final face-off between the Usos and Roman Reigns and Solo Sequoia before the Civil War match that is scheduled to take place. This, this segment was freaking fire, man. Um, Roman was like, yo, Usos, y'all could can, can come back to the bloodline. Y'all just got to acknowledge me and apologize. And the Usos like, bro, like, we ain't apologizing. We don't even want to be tribal chief. We don't want to do none of that crap. We 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 going to war tomorrow, fam. And when, when we beat you, you lose everything. So this was a really good segment, man. The ending was really cool, and I thought this was just a fire way to kick off. Um, the commentary they they mentioned something about Cody and and Dom main event in the show, but I don't think Cody and Dominic are main event of the show. Me personally, I don't think they should main event the show. I feel like the, the most intriguing match, the most important match, the most hyped up match needs to go on last. And, you know, no offense to Cody and Dom, but those guys have been feuding for like two weeks now. And it's really all started because Cody made fun of Dominic. This bloodline story has been viewing for not just days, not just for weeks, not just for months, but for years damn near three years now so it only makes sense that they do this and this goes on last so um yeah man but this was a overall from a outside of the ring standpoint this was a really good smackdown in terms of building up for the money in the bank um getting ready for the show tomorrow and all that good stuff but like in ring quality wise outside the tag team match the show was just kind of very mad kind of boring in ring quality wise but i hope y'all enjoyed my little review for smackdown it's kind of a first for me man it's I'm not used to doing a SmackDown review in the afternoon. The sun's still out. Usually it's dark and, you know, the moon's out. But, nah, man, it's still sunny out, hot out here, man. So, and obviously that's to be expected for tomorrow. So, I hope y'all enjoyed my SmackDown review, man. I'll see y'all tomorrow for Money in the Bank. And, uh, yeah, I'll see y'all in the next video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And, uh, yeah.